It's hardly what we expected to find. But from the moment the children piled off the school bus, we were enchanted. <laughs> the dingy building, the dark staircase, the tiny classroom, all of it melted away, overtaken by the rare beauty of what's happening here. As the other children sway and dance to the music, Sara keeps her head down. It's her first day. She's shy and scared. The other children were like this as well when they first started. <laughs> Learning tools are shared. It's all they can afford at the Center for Children with Down Syndrome, the only one of its kind in war-torn Idlib. All the staff here are volunteers, drawn to the center because while Syria's war has eradicated childhood, it has been especially cruel for the most vulnerable. They finally managed to coax Sarah outside. The isolation brought on by war, the lack of specific resources, meant that many children with Down syndrome regressed, while others never learned the basics, like walking, feeding themselves, and speaking. One of the boys plays with our microphone. The children may not be able to articulate what they have been through, but they are all well aware of the violence of their surroundings. Abdul Karim is six years old and a total charmer. Oh, apparently he used to be so shy, he would never come up to people. Hello. Hello, bravo. He wasn't even able to say any, any words. He'd lost all of his speech before he came here. The center was started by Abdullah Muhammad seven months ago. He's a pediatric nurse who did a year in a clinic for special needs children before the war. He pays the rent for this tiny space out of his own pocket. <laughs> We're struggling to stay open, Bara'a Abdullah, his wife and the center's director says. But at the same time, we can't let go of the kids. Especially not now, now that they have seen the impact they can have and knowing that hundreds more need their help. Down syndrome is a genetic condition in which a child has a full or partial extra chromosome. This affects the way that the child's brain and body develop. Early intervention can mitigate the majority of the developmental challenges. But even before the war, that was a struggle. One of the many problems is weak muscle development, Jamila Al Musa, the physical therapist, tells us. She says Abdul Karim should have splints to help his knee joints, but she has to work with the little she has. This is incredible. I mean, if we had been here two months ago, he wasn't able to walk on his own. They had to carry him through everything. And now, intense physical therapy, and he's doing so well. <laughs> Years ago, Sada's parents had put her in school, but she was severely bullied. Her mother tried to help her at home, and she was doing well until a rocket landed on their house. She was pulled out from under the rubble and hospitalized. Her parents tell us that after the strike, she stopped talking. One of the teachers keeps gently urging Sara to play, comforting her, making her feel safe. Just two hours after Sara arrived, she's already making friends. She's not alone anymore. This is the first time that we're seeing her interacting with other kids, bonding. Her father, Muhannad Ghazul, says, clearly emotional. She's still shy with us, but says, I'm happy, and runs off to play outside. If they were just given the opportunity, these children can grow up to fulfill their potential. War won't stop them. It's what the adults here dream of. It's what they see children with Down syndrome do in more developed parts of the world. But at least, they have created a space where there is no stigma, a space where there is joy and hope. Arwa Damon Siena, Idlib City, Syria.